Nothing beats bowling. You have to go to a special place, trade in your shoes for worse ones, awkwardly pick up a giant marble, try not to get your fingers stuck in it, and roll it across the floor to make a mess out of some upright wooden pins. Sure, it's a fun time and folks really good at bowling can't help themselves from being in your face over it. Especially this guy. There is really only one bowling game on the NES, Championship Bowling. But the Famicom got perfect bowling, and that never left Japan. So let's check these out and see what's up. Championship bowling is as basic as it gets, and I suppose that's not really a bad thing. It is just bowling. No frills and, frankly, no thrills. But if you want to play 8-bit bowling, this one shouldn't disappoint. You can choose between four bowlers to start, each with slightly different attributes as shown here in the manual. One is left-handed, one is right-handed with a mean hook, one is really strong, and one is adept with the lighter bowling balls. Next, you choose the lane you want. There are five different lanes total, and each is said to be a little different in terms of how the ball behaves on it, according to the manual. I didn't notice a giant difference between the lanes, personally. You can slide your bowler left to right to aim, as well as aim the ball in the direction you want. Additionally, you can add a little spin to the ball, and get that perfect strike that knocks down all the pins. To prepare your shot, you'll first line up the bowler, then you'll have to time the aim, and then the power. It's a lot like field goal kicking mechanics for football games. You can play with up to four players using just two controllers, so that's neat. Players one and three will take turns using one controller, and players two and four will take turns using the other. If you want to beat the game, you'll need to bowl a perfect 300. And while beating the CPU player isn't too hard in a single match, a perfect game will take some practice and skill. One neat nerdy thing that I found interesting was that the manual includes a page on the history of bowling. There are some fun facts in here, like did you know Abraham Lincoln was the first prominent American to bowl? Did you know the Dutch brought bowling to the Americas in the 1600s? I bet you friggin' didn't. This game is fine and all, but can a bowling game actually be perfect? Well, not quite perfect. To start, there are four different modes to choose from. Training mode is just you, by yourself, slinging balls toward pins. It is a good way to practice since here you won't have to wait for the CPU to do its thing. Then there's game mode, where you play a one-on-one -on -one match against the CPU. You select the number of matches you want to play, and then select between two very basic male and female characters. Enter your name, select your bowling arm, and how heavy of a ball you want. Then you go to select your opponent from this less than diverse list, each with a variation of bowling arm and ball weight. Now it's time to get your bowl on, as they say. You'll notice the theme of this bowling game is a little more sci-fi than maybe you expected. The pins magically zap in place after a flurry of electrical pulses. And the walls are lined with what futurists in the 80s thought would look cool, just different colored lights everywhere for no reason. In this one, the pin view remains at the top of the screen, and you align your bowler and take your shot from the bottom, so there's a disconnected view between the two, which is both good and bad, I guess. The good is that you can get a clear view of the pins, the bad is that it's difficult to fine-tune your aim like this. Speaking of aiming and shooting, this one is much trickier than it should be. For a very familiar and simplistic mechanic, the timing is tough to master. So you can move your bowler left or right to line up the shot, and once you've done that, you press A to bring up the meter. Here you can twist the ball to put a spin on the shot, a nice touch. Then for the shot itself, you press A to start the meter, and this is where things get finicky. The meter revs all the way to the top, and if you let it go too far, your bowler won't shoot at all. You want to hit A again right at the top, or at least before it goes too far. After you press A there, the meter quickly swings back down and you have to time your next press when it's in the center of the red. If you let it go too far out of the red, the bowler will just walk across the line and foul, and you won't get the shoot. If you don't get it right in the center, it affects the aim of your shot. Let it go beyond the center and you'll err to the right, or to the left if you hit it too soon. I can appreciate that a meter like this, very easy to master in most sports games, 
is at least a little tricky because after playing a game like this for a while, it's inevitable that you become so good at it from muscle memory that the game is no longer fun. That said, I had a really hard time hitting consecutive shots right on the money. In matches against the CPU, as you would guess, they have no issue with this and are pretty tough to defeat as a result. I should add that I had to emulate this one for footage and maybe some lag with the emulator resulted in being a little more difficult than it otherwise would be, I'm not sure. Either way, it's a very picky mechanic that I both appreciate for the added difficulty and despise for being bad at it. There are two other modes here. The first is a versus mode so you can bring a friend along and you can both sweat out the shot meter or a doubles mode where you can play with up to four people with two controllers, two on one team and two on another. So that's kind of cool. As for the bowling itself, yeah, it's bowling. I mean, what did you expect? A weird and unnecessary part of the game is that some of the female bowlers are in skirts and their shots are, uh, a bit revealing. I'm not saying it's terrible or anything, just that it's out of place in a game that is otherwise pretty dull. And maybe that was their reason for adding it. Even the cover presents a weird vibe that's not really captured here at all. Everything is kind of 50s and futuristic at the same time, like this is a bowling alley from the Fallout series before the bombs hit. Anyway, that does it for Perfect Bowling. It's an English-friendly Famicom game, so that's nice, but all in all, it's not really worth going out of your way for. Championship Bowling is, in my opinion, a better overall experience. Alright, I guess that does it for bowling games on the NES and the Famicom. Who do you think you are? I am, and thanks for watching.